Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today we are going to do a grain system tour of our older grain complex. At the beginning of harvest, we did a grain system tour of our newer grain complex, and in that video I asked if there was any interest in touring the older complex, which is the one you're seeing in this aerial image here. And yeah, people were interested, so here we are. A couple quick things before we get started with the video. Don't forget to thumbs up the video. That really helps the channel grow. We're closing in on 100K, so that would really help. Also, don't forget to check the links in the description, including the link to farmfocus.com, where you can find our Dementia Awareness shirt. We are doing a fundraiser for Dementia Awareness, so check that out. Proceeds go towards Dementia Research, so enjoy the video. Okay, guys, before we get started on the tour, let's look at the map, the flow chart and show you how this place works. All right, here we have our flow chart. So let's get over here and get to it. We got a little bit of a glare. Okay, so here we have our flow chart. Here is a layout of the grain system. So, let's start with the numbers of the bins. Number one, number two, number five, down here. That's right, number five. Number three, number four, Number six, they're numbered in the order they were built. Originally, there was four bins built. Then the fifth was added, then the sixth. So the numbering was a little confusing, but I've been here long enough that it's not that bad. Now let's go over capacity. We have on bin number one, 17,500 bushel. It's a 33 foot diameter bin. Number two, 33 foot diameter bin, 18,000 bushel capacity because there's no false floor in there. Bin number five, it is 17,500 bushel capacity, 33 foot diameter bin with a false floor. Number three, 30 foot diameter bin, 15,000 bushel. Number four, 30 foot diameter bin, 15,000 bushel. And number six, 36 foot diameter bin, 20,000 bushel capacity. Number six this year has beans and number four this year have beans. That's subject to change. We might switch that depending on how our storage needs evolve or you know, whatever. So that's uh, that's the capacity of the bins, that's the layout of the bins and the numbers. Here we have our drive-through. This is where we dump. We do not have a pit here, we have a U-trough, which is what all these bins, except for this one, bin number five does not tie back into the leg. They all dump into that U-trough, which dumps into the leg. Except for bins number one and two, they dump directly into the leg. The leg is located in between bin number one and two. Directly behind the dryer. The dryer is right here. We have our wet tanks right here. They are overhead. They are directly over top of the dryer. So our wet tanks, these are cone bottom wet tanks on a superstructure over top of the dryer. Like I say, they are 1800 bushel capacity. So a little bit of a limiting factor there. They dump directly into the dryer. And then we also have on wet bin number one, a valve we can turn that will direct it to a loadout in the drive through Okay, so. This is what we call the doghouse. That's where bins number three, four, and six dump into the U-trough. The U-trough runs through there. In the videos, you've probably heard us talking about water problems. Most of that is coming from the doghouse or the leg. The leg is in a pit. This is a, I believe it's a 95 foot total height Kramer leg. It's 3,000 bushels an hour. So it is quite a bit slower than our other leg. And like I say, it is down in a hole. We will set, we'll, I'll show you that here in a minute. And then, of course, here's the test shack right there. Oh, there. So, yeah, there's the map of the bins. Now, let's go look around. Hey, sorry for the background noise. We are running corn today, so I am dumping trucks while we're doing this tour. This facility was started in, I believe, 1974. So, the first four bins were uh, erected then. And then it was added to, I believe, in 1976. We did not have any part of that. We did not farm this particular piece of dirt at that time. The farmers that were farming it, they were farming it with uh, small gleaner combines, I believe two of them, and a lot of straight trucks. So that's what this facility was built for. And in its day, it was probably one of the nicest ones, most efficient facilities around. Like I say, that was in the mid-70s. So at that time, that holding bin would only be an 1800 bushel wouldn't have been an issue because I don't think they were probably doing more than like a thousand bushel an hour maybe so to start off with here's our drive through like i said we are dumping into a u trough so this is just a hanging auger basically there's no actual pit here and the leg is right behind this wall over here's all of our electric our push buttons 
This part is laid out really nice. It's probably one of my favorite parts about this place is everything's right here. Very easy to control. Um, everything's labeled. Usually we use these magnets and put them over what's being run right now. So like right now I'm running the dump auger. So we got a, we got a magnet over it. Over here is how you turn your leg on. Here is our electronic consigner or distributor, whatever you want to call it. So right now we're going into wet bin number one, which is what one W means. As long as we got a green light, we're hitting the right hole. <laughs> Here is our sensors for our wet bin. When I did the green bin tour of the other facility, everyone said we needed light sensors. We do have light sensors. They're just not at that grain facility. So right now, the first sensor is off in that wet bin. Um, that can be deceiving. So what I mean by that is when this fills all the way up and this light bulb shuts off, theoretically we have 1,800 bushel in that bin. But sometimes when the dryer loads, that light will still be off because it's coating down and hasn't tripped the sensor yet. But that's how we know when our wet tanks are full. They have lied to us before in the past, but for the most part they work pretty well. Here is our 1976 Super B dryer. Uh, it holds roughly 400 bushel. It's a fuel hog. It's not the most efficient, but it still runs. It still gets the job done. That dryer's had several million of bushels of corn and beans through it, and it still runs okay. So, uh, a few years ago, we had to put a mower, motor in one of the fans, but other than that, haven't had a whole lot of issues. The bottom metal's getting a little thin, but, um, you know, as old as that thing is, that's understandable. It's kind of like George. All right, so here is one of the main drawbacks of this place. This leg is down in a hole. I hate this part of this grain bin. We have to get down in there to access the leg boots to clean them out. I'm a bigger guy. I don't have a lot of space. It fills with water and it's just an all around dingy looking spot. Thank God I've never seen a snake in it because if I had, I would not be getting back in there ever. Now over on the other side of the U trough, we have what I refer to as the dog house. When we were looking at the schematic. So there you can see the U trough. That's what goes all the way through, but this is how all the other bins tie in. We have had issues with that filling up with water. If it gets too full, if that pump quits working, it will run right across the U trough and into the lake. So water is by far the biggest enemy of this drain system. If you look, it's built into a hillside. Like many farms at the time, they did not want to sacrifice any tillable ground, so they didn't. They put it into the hillside instead of on top of the hill or in this seven acre field right here that's completely flat with great drainage. Didn't think ahead, I guess, but they were also trying to not lose any tillable ground. Switching back to the dryer, one thing that's helped that dryer stay in as good a shape as it is for that old of a dryer is that, that cover. That cover helps keep a lot of the water off of it. It's high enough that the steam can still get out. That's definitely helped a lot. That and George maintained this dryer for about 30 years and he is extremely meticulous in his maintenance. Also helped that dryer. Now let's talk about these rubber mats. Every video people ask me what these rubber things are on the bottom of our bins. Almost every video that we're over here. These rubber mats were put on in an attempt to keep water from running and sitting down here around the base of these bins and maybe trickling down in through the floor. A lot of these bins here, like almost all of them, but two don't have false floors. They just have air channels for the fans. So there's no false floor. So if water sits there and seeps under, it will cause some spoilage. So that's what that's for. It works okay. Um, there's holes in it. I mean, you have to patch it periodically. The biggest downfall of this idea it is a haven for rats. So if you've been watching the channel very often, sometimes I will go around and poke these things with a baseball bat, wait till something moves and then smack it. And yeah, I kill a lot of rats like that. We've also found possums, groundhogs, and raccoons in there. So it does create kind of a, a habitat for wild animals. Now most of the bins here have a couple extra holes in them. What I mean, like this system right here, one time this bin plugged up, we couldn't get corn or beans out of it, so we cut a hole in it, put a slide on it right there, and cut a hole in this tube, open that slide, corn ran in, that's how we unloaded the bin that year. Almost every bin over here has one of those. Like I say, they've been here for a long time, so that happens. These bins are almost 45 years old, so um, there's a lot of years stuff could go wrong, sometimes it does. 
Now I mentioned that the leg was a 3,500 bushel an hour leg. It is. That leg is not as old as the whole facility. It was replaced in 2002 or 2001. I'd have to look, it's wrote down in there. That is a Kramer leg, which is also the same brand of leg that we have at the other grain bins. That is a piece of paper that has all the data on our leg. Let's see here. It's 192 foot of belting. I'm trying to find total footage. 3,700 bushels an hour. And this leg was put in December 15th, 2000. So it's almost 20 years old. Now one of the main things about this grain bin is this notebook. Not that notebook. Where's the notebook? Ah, there we go. These two notebooks have everything that has ever happened here wrote down. That is the manual for the dryer and that is the service book. So anytime anything is serviced, it is wrote down in that book. So like if I want to know when the last time that leg was greased, I can flip through my notebook and I will find out when it was greased. Same with every unload motor, same with the dryer, same with everything. And that really helps keep things moving pretty smooth over here. All right, now let's talk about some things I dislike about this grain facility. Number one, these unload augers. This is the only one here, but I hate this style of unloader. It is slow, it gives us fits, it always plugs up, it never runs right, it's a pain to clean up. Not my favorite. But I guess it's better than moving an auger every time you want to get porn out of this bin because it does not reach the leg. Number two, these style fans. These are not the centrifugal fans like we have at the newer grain facility. These are called, I think they're axial fans. They are much louder, they are extremely, extremely loud. And they don't do as good a job as the centrifugal fans at the newer grain bins. Number three, this dryer. It's just slow and it's inefficient. That's the main thing I dislike about it. It is a batch dryer. It's not a continuous flow dryer. So basically here, here pretty soon, as soon as I get done filming this, I'm going to hit start. It's going to load a batch. Then it's going to dry it. Then it's going to cool it. Then it's going to dump it. And that'll probably take, with the moisture of this corn, close to two hours. That's 400 bushel in two hours. It's very slow compared to a newer dryer. Number four, I've already mentioned, the leg being in the hole. Don't like that. Number five is just how tight everything is here. We've widened this drive through out twice. It cannot go any wider, so hopefully we don't need it to go any wider. Also, we can't dump a dump truck over here hardly because of how short the drive through is. So, those are a couple issues. Number six, this doghouse. Like I said, it fills up with water. We have tried to help the drainage. We dug a tile into this doghouse. Right beside it, it's not actually in the doghouse. I guess that's the next step, is punching a hole through the concrete foundation to get it in there to help drain that water. And last, just, there's no room to expand. There just wasn't a lot of planning for the future here. But who could have seen how big combines would be now? Or how many acres a farm would be farming now? I mean, like I said, when this was built, they did plan for the future. They added bins twice. So it was planned for the future, but it just, wasn't, but it just wasn't in a good location to begin with, in my opinion. Buttered up next to this hill. Basically, we wanted to expand right now. Um, I, if I had to expand here, I definitely wouldn't be able to use that leg. Um, I'd probably have to build a bin off to the side or something. I don't know. It'd be, it'd be kind of a pain in the butt to expand here. It could be done, but that's probably my main complaint is just the lack of space here, the lack of usable room. Um, in the ease of uh, expansion. Now there are things that I like about this place. For example, the push buttons. Super nice and organized. Easy to get to. Everything's concreted. Easy to clean up. I like the electric consigner. I like it way more than the cable system we have at the other bins. I regret not putting that at the other bins. I did forget one thing that I dislike. The wet storage capacity of this place is just very low. But like I've said in previous videos, how we work around that is we fill up bin number one with five or six loads and then core it, creating a funnel. Let's go into the whiteboard and I'll show you what I'm talking about. All right, here we've got the side view of a grain bin. Disregard how terrible I am at drawing. Yeah, I trace those, don't worry about it. Okay, so here we have the side view of a grain bin. It is filling up and it fills kind of like this. It mounds up. So what we will do is we will fill that 
like I say, five or six loads. We basically want it just above the door. So let's just say that's the door right here. So we've got it piled up above the door. And then we will core it. When I say we core it, we will pull loads out of the center. So there's a center hole right here. And that's where the grain bin's dumped from. We will pull a few loads out, and what will happen is the grain will start to do this. It will funnel down. And it will eventually quit running. And that's what I'm talking about when I say we are making a cone or a funnel for our larger wet bin. So basically we turn our number one grain bin into a wet bin this way. So we will fill it then, like this is dry corn right here. I should have mentioned that. This is dry. So this is all dryer dumps. So now that we've pulled this corn out, we've probably transferred it to one of the other bins. We have dry corn here. We will fill it with wet corn now. So let's just say we fill the bin. This is all wet corn in here. And then when these and then when these run empty, like on a rain day or something, we will come over here and we will transfer wet corn out of bin number one. And we will put it in these two bins because these two bins feed the dryer. We don't have this wire to actually feed the dryer at the moment. That could probably be done, but we've just never done it. So that's, uh, that's how we get extra wet capacity here. Basically, when we do this, we can almost have... We'll have right around 15,000 bushel of wet storage here. But this is something I get questioned on a lot, what I mean by creating our funnel or our cone for our wet bin. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah, guys, that's kind of a tour of this grain facility. We still use this place. It gets used every year. Um, it's not the end of the world. It's just not as quick as the other, as the other grain system. Uh, Larry just made the comment when we were dumping trucks. said, that other one really spoils you. I'm like, yeah. Because you're looking at about a 30 minute unload time versus a 10 minute unload time. So yeah, it definitely spoils you. But with lessons we learned from this place, that's how we were able to design our other grain facility to be as efficient as we could make it and um, with the most room for expansion as we could think to make. So we learned some stuff here and yeah, we still use this place. Like I say, we were planning on making this just the bean facility because even with that slow leg, it is fast enough for the most part to keep up with us and beans. But this year, we got that AGI SureTrack system. So we wanted to put some beans over there into that facility, the new grain facility, because these bins don't have those cables. Um, if you're not sure what I'm talking about, go check out our other grain bin tour. I go over it there. But last year we only had, I think, two bins with corn in them. So uh, maybe moving forward, this will just be the bean facility again. I don't know, but that's kind of how we've got it laid out now. Hey guys, thanks for watching. Do me a favor, don't forget to thumbs up the video. Leave us a comment. We love reading everybody's comments. Every morning I catch dad reading comments and trying to respond, but he can't figure out how. On the computer when I go to the office in the morning. Also, if you need any Brown Farms merch, we got hoodies, we got hats, we got the dementia t-shirts, the dementia awareness shirts. If you haven't picked one of those up, don't miss your chance because those are a limited time offering and the proceeds of those shirts are going towards dementia research, so it's a really good cause. Check those out, links in the description. And yeah, we'll see you in the next one. We've got a pretty big treat coming up. Check the Instagram if you don't know what I'm talking about.